If you're struggling to level up your computer programming journey, this video is for you. In this video, I'll share my top tips to survive coding as a beginner. Like you, I had no experience in programming when I started my school year at Stanford in 2018. But over the four years, I learned some things that work well as beginners and some things that are terrible. So if you want to find those out, stick until the end. Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Srijan and I love making videos about education, technology, and entrepreneurship. So if those things interest you, smash that subscribe button. Let's start with some background of my experience as a beginner in programming. I started coding in 2018 in university. I had no high school experience prior to that. And I did not even want to be an engineer when I was in high school. I used to read one book every week and I would read stuff from economics, sociology, a lot of books that are really meant for perhaps an economics major. So I thought I'd be an economics major. But when I came to university, I took my first computer science class. And even though I struggled a lot, I really loved that process of building something from scratch, how line by line you make a function and then functions make something beautiful like a website or a game. And that process sparked a lot of joy in me. And I thought that sure, why not give this a try? Um, but it was not easy, it was very difficult I remember debugging for hours and hours. Others would do an assignment in 10 hours, people who had AP computer science. But for me, it would take probably 30 hours and I had other courses as well. So it was a nightmare to juggle programming as a beginner. The problem was I was doing many things wrong. So I thought I'd make a video sharing the things that people do that are not useful because programming is so different from any other thing you have studied in school. My first advice is to focus on concepts over languages. The classic beginner mistake is to start learning languages. They would learn JavaScript, they'd learn Python, they'd learn C++, and they'd go from this and that. That's a terrible mistake. And that's something I did as well. My first course was in Java. My second course was in C++. And even though I couldn't choose that, I wish I had stuck to one language in my first year. And this is why programming languages are not like English and Bangla. They are really related to each other. They're logical components. So if you learn one language really well, it takes a maximum of two weeks to become intermediate at a second language. So if you learn Python really well, you can pick up something like Java or C++ within two weeks. Heck, you can make a to-do list app in any language and perhaps pick it up quite fast, at least to a medium extent, to the point where you would get an internship with that language. So. What you really should learn is fundamentals. What are these fundamentals? Things like for loops, things like algorithms, things like hash maps. These help you build more complex things. You should really think of learning to coding as a beginner as learning pieces of a puzzle. And when you learn one thing, you would eventually be able to join the puzzles to make something beautiful. So try to learn those pieces rather than languages. Try to learn fundamentals like the things I mentioned instead of learning three different languages in your first year. So the first big thing I would say is for your first year, just practice with one language. Choose Python or JavaScript, something simple, and just practice with that. You don't need to experiment with other languages because if you are trying to learn new syntax along with a new language, that's going to be really hard. So just try to build projects with that one language. My second advice is to focus on quantity of problems more than the quality of problems. Most people try to do really hard problems when they start. Either they want to make a really complex project or they want to do something that has never been done before. The problem is when you're a beginner, you don't have the skills to do all of those things. So if you try to do something really hard, you are going to get demotivated very soon. So it's really important to do something that is difficult but is achievable. So I would really recommend try to do more easy and medium problems than really difficult problems. If you are doing something like lead code, that can be a great thing, but try to master easy problems first. So do many problems rather than a few problems. When I was doing my programming classes, they were quite rigorous and we would get really hard problems in our problem sets. So problem set is just a list of questions that we get from our professor and we have to turn it in in a weekly. Think of it like a weekly assignment. So these problems are really hard and we did not have practice to do these hard problems. Unlike school, 
in university, no one really gives you the stepping stone to doing hard problems because you need to build skills first to be able to do really hard problems. And I struggle really hard to get problems that were easy that would help me build skills so that eventually I'll be able to tackle the hard problem in the problem set. So my recommendation, particularly for data structures, would be try to do easy problems on a data structure on something like Lead Code or Code Academy. So if you're learning hash maps for the first time, do 10 easy questions the day you see hash maps. Have an open book, use the internet, use all the resources, but do 10 easy questions on your own and then look at your problem set because then you'll get skills to do the problem set. That practice will help you more efficient in the problem set. The third tip is to not be stuck. The easiest thing to do is to just hammer your head on the computer screen, shouting at the computer, why does my code not run? Because you don't have the skills to debug. So when your code doesn't run, there's a problem, we call it a bug in computer science. And a bug is basically something you have to fix. Um, the reason why it's called a bug is also interesting. In the 1960s, there used to be large computers where you would have manual cards, where you would put punch cards, and that's how the programming computations were done on literal cards. And there was an insect in one of the machines, which is why it didn't run, so it was called a bug. So similarly, now you have these hypothetical software bugs that are really hard to solve and you can be stuck on them for hours. If you're doing an assignment, you're not trying to master that assignment or be the best person in the world to do that assignment. You're try just trying to learn that material in the shortest possible time so that you can learn something else. So I would place a really high premium on my time and I would try to get unstuck as soon as possible. So my hard deadline was if I'm stuck on something for more than 15 minutes, I'll at least consult the internet. I'll Google, I'll ask ChatGPT, I'll ask uh, someone in email or I'll send them a message. I'll do something. If I'm stuck on a problem for more than 30 minutes, I'll really try to get a real person on this. So it can be a friend, it can be my roommate, it can be a mentor, really anyone who can actually look at what I have. If you have office hours in your school, try to go to those office hours. The key is to do things fast. So if you go to these office hours, you'll be able to do an assignment in half the time than it would take you otherwise. And time is valuable. Have fun with your friends, do more programming problems, do whatever you want, but try to save time. My fourth tip is to have a bias towards projects. As a beginner, people will just throw these classical like theory knowledge at you. At school, you will do classes in data structures, then perhaps algorithms and analysis, then perhaps computer systems, you will get a little flavor of many different things. The problem with that is it's demotivating. These things are boring and we have better ways of doing things. Now, I'm not saying these things are not useful. They're really useful for cutting edge stuff, but they're not useful for 95% of people for the 95% of things they wanna do, like making a website or making an app. So my recommendation would be to do projects as soon as possible, because otherwise, you'll feel demotivated. You'll feel you're learning all this theory. What is this useful for? I still remember the first time I fell in love with programming is when I actually did a project on my own. And that was the moment where I realized this joy of creation and it was a beautiful moment. I think that is something everyone should experience as soon as possible in their programming journey. And that's why I recommend this to everyone. Um, if you're doing classes at a university, you'd probably do classes in sequence like me. So my first class was CS106A, Introduction to Programming. My second class was CS106B, Introduction to Data Structures and Algorithms. My third class was CS107, where you learn computer systems and binary math and assembly language. And that stuff was really boring. It was only when I did Introduction to human computer Interaction, I actually made a full app from everything, from ideation to completion. And that entire process of making a full app from zero to something was the moment where I realized I wanted to do computer science. So try to do projects as soon as possible. Otherwise you'll get bored of all the theory. And to do projects, I recommend taking some applied classes. So try to take a class on website development or web development. Try to take a class on React if possible because that's really popular these days. If you want to be into data science or you like learning about machine learning, then try to do a class with Python. So that's how you build 
and slowly go towards more harder classes. Lastly, put community first when it comes to learning. Learning should be a collaborative process. You should learn with your friends, you should learn with other people, and you should teach them as you learn from them. Because it's really more fun when you just do something with your friends. I remember when I was a student, I used to have um, a party, a, a piece at party at our burger place where we would just gather, discuss our answers, and realize what are the right solutions. It's a lot faster when you learn from your peers because they can relate to you. Unlike professors who have forgotten what was what unlike professors who have forgotten what struggling was like as a student your peer knows your problems because they faced them just hours ago so if you learn with your friends it's a lot faster and it will also help you learn way way more online communities can also be very helpful discord servers slack groups anywhere where you can send a quick question and get a quick feedback from someone if you can't make one with your friends, you can always join many online communities that you can just Google and literally just join. You can post your questions on things like Stack Overflow or ChatGPT is a sparring partner for ideas. I consider talking with ChatGPT like learning, almost learning with a friend because it kind of can understand context and then tell you great feedback. So that's something I'd also recommend. Another thing you can do is pair programming. You can work with another friend and both of you can program it together. The way usually it works is you get a function and you think that how this should be built. You make a design and then you program together. One person programs and another person tries to pick the bug in the program. So pair program is also a very effective way. This also helps you to learn to read other people's code or to collaborate as an engineer. So that is something definitely worth trying in your personal projects. Finally, the mindset. Programming is supposed to be hard. It's not natural. It's not something that monkeys or other animals do. So this is a learned skill. And with time, you can learn it. You can get better at it. So I think it's important to enjoy the journey more than the destination. Celebrate every small goal or growth you have when you do your first assignment. Give yourself a cookie. Like you came really far. And I think it's really important to enjoy your journey because otherwise your struggles will feel like pain. When you enjoy the journey, your struggles feel like growth. And I think that's the mindset we should all be going for. If you stuck until this point, thank you. If you want to see more videos like this, like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next week.